Today on the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast, we're talking about the new episode of What If? Number four, what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands? Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. And my name is Jay Scotty St. Clair. Jay Scotty, how you doing tonight, buddy? Doing fantastic. Excited to talk about another crazy entry in this multiversal series, What If? Same, same, my friend. And like... Uh, thank you for being such a stalwart on these podcasts so far, on these reaction casts. <laughs> between, <laughs> between me and Jeff, I think we've only been together one time, so uh, we really appreciate you being here, and uh, it's exciting to uh, talk to you about this tonight. I think... I, uh, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I appreciate the opportunity as the resident animation guy I gotta represent, so... Yeah! Rep- Thanks for having me. Represent! Um, okay, so this episode full spoiler alert we're going to talk about dr strange uh losing his heart instead of his hands was way more just heavy just adult serious i mean just the loss i mean so in the end of dr strange this the, the beginning of this story mirrors the end of dr strange right like the end of dr strange is him choosing to die over and over he's choosing to sacrifice himself over and over and the end the beginning of this story is him losing something he's not willing to lose over and over and over and it's like the the just psychological difference between those two events and like had them happening at different places in his story just sends him down just wildly different paths yeah it's just interesting how you take that concept he is an arrogant fellow and a very competent fellow but it's the fact that you know christine palmer we didn't really get to see it in the film all that much but whatever moments of humanity he had initially it was because of her so you really get to see if he's not taught that lesson of humility by losing what he's really good at professionally mm-hmm. when he loses his heart it's a much more chaotic and and dangerous situation which is fitting for someone as powerful as, as dr strange yeah yeah for sure and and they handled it beautifully and th- one thing I've been impressed with all these what ifs so far is they do a good job of telling a, even though it's a different story and some of the things will be mirrored, like they'll reference the regular MCU, like with certain lines being the same, but they really do do a good job of telling a new story and his uh, going back to like the library of Cagliostra and like sure. getting into that building and like dealing with the runes on the floor and all that stuff. like that was just so inventive and interesting and different i think i feel like they they've made a like intentional decision to always have a few scenes that are not mirrors of other scenes you know what i mean sure sure yeah that scene in particular i got very strong indiana jones vibes it felt very swashbuckling oh, and like you know raiders of the lost ark finding the the temple there which is really cool to see a character like dr strange we've really only seen him in more like cerebral scenarios so it's really cool to see what the potential for the character there is and this just this animation style and this whole what if concept of the multiverse like i said it on animation deliberation but it's one of those things in the conversation of the mcu i feel like people forget that the multiverse has been a thing since 2016 since dr strange so i i really just feel like this episode and and Doctor Strange, that character is just the, it really lends itself to this series and this animated style. I was just really, really pleased to see Doctor Strange be able to showcase so much personality and his power set is always just a feast for the eyes. I totally agree. I think that um, Doctor Strange's style and power set and everything fits this so well. And the the thing with the animation that blew me away this episode was the absorption scene. Oh yeah. That was so interesting. And like, again, it, it's another scene that's completely unlike anything we've seen in the MCU. Uh, I wondered if that tentacle monster might be Hydra's champion. Yeah, that's uh it definitely looked similar in terms of just the stylization of the, of the tentacles and the suction cups there and whatnot. Yeah. I always in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, uh, Shumagorath, and for more casual fans, that's basically he's a chaos lord, a long time reoccurring villain of Doctor Strange, and he basically mm. exists between, you know, different dimensions and kind of feeds on that chaotic 
um, energy there. But yeah, I guess in retrospect, a lot of people were saying that that tentacle champion that we saw in the Captain Carter episode was actually one of the abelisks that we saw in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in the opening scene there. Huh. Wait, that that's who this was or that's who the that's champion? Who it was in, that's who it was in, in, yeah, the champion in Captain Carter. And like, like I said, the tentacles looked very similar. Hmm. To what we saw in that episode, so it might be the same creature. I'm also but just I'm pulling from Agents of Shield as well. Oh, oh did you I watch see, Agents of Shield? See. Which the the character that was was Hive, who was uh, also some sort of tentacle creature that Hydra was serving, uh, that they called upon. So I I thought that that was probably a reference to the creature that whatever creature in comics they're basing the both of those on. I assumed was what they were doing there. But okay, either okay. way, a tentacle monster reaching through a portal, it seems weird to put that in two episodes out of four and it not be a connection. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but my favorite part was, uh, let's start with something small. And then that little like evil troll just came <laughs> trumping up. Garden gnome. <laughs> yeah, little evil <laughs> sentient garden gnome. Like, what the hell is that? What yeah, is going yeah. on right now? <laughs> it's, it's those kind of things that just make me super excited for Sam Raimi to get to play with the character in yes. multiverse of madness. <laughs> that is a great point because Sam Raimi, something that I sometimes under appreciate is like raw creativity. I'm oh, yeah. such a, I love uh, symmetry. I love like questions and answers. I love like finding a perfect analog. Like you're trying to tell a story about whatever the death of your father. And then you find a way to tell it through, uh, like, like whatever superheroes. And so you like make everything work perfectly. I, I, when I think of creativity and the way my own creativity works with music and with everything, like I tend to build things out of like, take the raw materials and build toward a goal. If that makes you sense. You like to see a, a formula pay off. Right. And so yeah. that's the kind of stuff that's in my head when I'm, everything works toward a goal. And when I see a garden gnome, that is just so weird and creative <laughs> that it has nothing to do with the overall plot of this. It could have been any small little creature come out of there, but it being a garden gnome is so creative. And you're right. Sam Raimi is wonderful at like having just like weird, wild, crazy stuff happen. And so, yeah, Sam Raimi is a great, uh, great one to take on that pure creativity. I'm trying to remember what it was. There was some movie recently that I just was blown away by like the utter pure creativity of it and i'm trying to like place what i'm thinking of it's it's been something that's been emerging in my brain lately is like something that i have underappreciated for a long time and i'm 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 wouldn't uh, happen to be free guy i know that's kind of a, a big release that just happened see, that, that one no i love okay. free guy but that one is very paint by numbers in a way because it's like it is yeah certainly in, in a lot of ways yeah yeah it's very um we want to make a movie about this and then you just solve for X. Like how, what would, what would, what would that mean? You know, like, so the get the free guy would have to be this way and then you need it to do this. And then you do like, it's not it, to me, almost like you, the, all of that movie could be extrapolated from the initial idea. You know what I mean? Sure. Like you just sort of build it out. There's a few weird moments, but like they're all based in like video game lore, but things like that scene where he's, entering into the library of Cagliostra and things sure. like the garden gnome scene or like the absorption scene, those things and the way he becomes the monster as he's absorbing oh, it. Oh, just yeah. that, that animation blew me away. But things like oh, that are yeah. just so creative and interesting and different. They're, they're more than solving for X. And as a, the kind of creative that that's the way my brain works, I'm like always solving for X. Like I really love that weirdness of this and really, really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I, I found it kind of interesting in the fact that it paid like so much homage to the original Dr. Strange film and in the fact that it kind of picked up right, where, right where that one left off, but it even mimicked the whole like groundhog day scenario where we got mm -hmm. to see him there at the end, you know, die a, a thousand times over. But this time it was with the, the car accident. We just kind of talk about the heavy nature of this episode and I'm talking about how much I enjoyed it, but a lot of the time it was, there was a, a heavy feeling of despair and, and I wasn't really enjoying the things that were happening on screen as much as I were, was appreciating the effectiveness of it all. If that makes sense. It was, 
I really appreciate this episode, but I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy like going back to rewatch it just because it, it, it really is so heavy, but it lends a lot of credence. And it's one of my favorite things about animation is any time that you can really get behind that argument that animation is not just for kids. And a lot of ways, this series is impressed with it as I have been so far. Um, it has lent, leaned into a few trappings of, you know, the more uh, catering to a, a younger audience. And it's just kind of nice to get to spend some time in a more dark and mature area. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I can't imagine showing this to a child. Oh, like right. the sadness of it and the scariness of sure. the Doctor Strange that he becomes and like that scene where he where he does bring her back to life and he's a monster like that's just oh, all yeah. really creepy. I would not show this to, you know, a young child at least. Um mm -hmm. that, yeah, this feels like a teen and above kind of show. Like my niece, my little 10-year-old niece, I would not show this to. It's it's Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting that they took that turn with it. Um after all of the others have been pretty straight down the line, like at least appropriate for children, even if not, if not made for children, appropriate for children. It kind of also, I, I made the Indiana Jones comparisons, but there were a number of times and you make mention of that time where he finally has Christine there and Christine has been resurrected, but he's this grotesque multi eyed horned yeah. monster. And actually, oddly enough, it gave me, Rick and Morty vibes where there wasn't necessarily as much comedy. I mean, you did get some of that Marvel cinematic universe comedy there, especially in the beginning. I loved the, you've lost your marbles line. That was, that kind of hmm. stood out to me, but outside of that, it, it really did walk that, that fine line of like heartbreak and, and poignancy there. And just like seeing what a beautiful and powerful mind when it's just, twisted and by trauma and, and heartache what can happen and it's just that really affects me it's it's uh yeah yeah love can not only make you lose your heart but make you lose your mind mm. um mm -hmm. the 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 um cagliostro says i guess that he was no that wasn't cagliostro right that was was it was that cagliostro i thought that was him at first the gentleman there he calls himself obang but it, yeah i think you know i wouldn't be entirely surprised if he if he actually is Cagliostro. It kind of left the mystery there, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. When he calls him that, I was thinking, oh, that must be Cagliostro's first name or something. But like, mm. I don't know why I just assumed that. Like, I, I assumed it when he first met him because it was his library or whatever. And then sure. he then when he he's obfuscates and doesn't answer the question, I was like, he's definitely him. And then they just never revisit it. So I was like, OK, maybe maybe yeah. not. Maybe I'm yeah. reading into it too much. Uh, we got a lot more of this episode of Watu. Like real, oh, sure. way more a watch to than we uh, than I even expected, um, and it, it's interesting because we've seen this is the fourth episode and we've seen more and more of a watch to as it's gone on, and right. mo more detail of his face, like just more of everything. And in this, he was heard by Doctor Strange early on. Yeah, uh, he talks about wanting and how he could and would would like to interfere and like point him in the better direction, but he he can't risk. All universes. He says that basically him getting involved will risk all universes right. for the sake of this one. And he can't make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, that was cool. One of my favorite Uatu shots in this was when they closed the car door. Did you, did you notice that one? Um, they closed, uh, he closes his car door, puts Christine in. It's one of the many times he's trying to save Christine. He closes sure, the sure. car door and you just see Uatu's eyes in the reflection of the car door. I don't think I picked up on that one. Really, wow. it was I'm a really excited cool, to, to go back and catch that one. Nice. Kind of uh, manipulated, you know, stretched out like in the concave surface of the thing, but you close and you just kind of see his eyes looking down. Ah, it's really ah, cool. Cool, cool. I'm excited to, yeah, to check that one out. Yeah, man. Um, super. I, I liked from the very beginning, he's talking about her uh, and they almost get in the wreck. And it's in that moment, he says, We're okay. We're okay. And he reaches over and touches her and says, You're okay. Like, like mm. that he says it early on. He's like, you are the only thing that matters. Like, and that is a toxic thing, you know, like he loves her so much in this that like, she is all that matters. Yeah. And I, I thought it was interesting the way they introduced that scene. I almost felt like it was just a straight up flashback at first. And you didn't realize that he had already undergone the time travel to manipulate things. It was only when she responded to him, like, you're being, you're being so, I can't remember what, she, what the word she was just like charming. She was just basically a little flabbergasted by how into her he was being. So, hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. You mean on after he comes back and is is more a little more effusive towards her, a little less uh, cold. Correct. Just like the scene transition there, I don't think they like spelled it out exactly that he was using time travel. I actually don't think you actually see the time stone activated until that crash happens, and he's like, "No, no, not again." And then you see that it was underneath his shirt the entire time. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. You can't you definitely can't see the time stone for that that time period. I guess I thought it was because he. I think he activates it in the future, or he reaches down to activate it, or something before that mm. scene begins. Um, right, right, and, right. And, and he definitely. But I did find it weird that he keeps trying to go on that road for a couple the first couple times. I'm like, just do something else. The first time he his only difference is he tries to use his blinker, which I thought was a weird like. He's still decision. driving very aggressively. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, have this opportunity. But here. I'm using my blinker this time. That's a really <laughs> funny, weird thing to do in animation. Like, <laughs> look at me using my blinker. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Uh, also, some, something weird. And I wonder if this changes what we think about the movie Doctor Strange. Because uh, they said when he defeated Dormammu, he became the Sorcerer Supreme by defeating Dormammu. Uh, hmm. in, in this episode. Now, that's never said out loud in Doctor Strange. Now, I, when I left the theater, I always kind of assumed he was the Sorcerer of Supreme, and he seems to have taken that role. He seems to have run one of the Sanctums, at least. That's an interesting point. I think it's always been an argument for the diehard MCU fans. Is Doctor Strange the Sorcerer of Supreme, or is he on the way to becoming the Sorcerer of Supreme? And that's just the nature of a character that, you know, plays with time travel so much. We get the ancient one telling us that he is the sorcerer, Su sorcerer supreme and is meant to be the greatest among them. But uh, for my money, I, I do believe he is the, the sorcerer supreme. The ancient one's no longer in the picture. Uh, Mordo has followed a different path, and Wong seems to, while he's still very much guiding Strange and offering his tutelage where he can, he seems to acknowledge that Strange has at least more raw potential than he does. So. Yeah, I give the the title of Sorcerer Supreme to to Strange. Doctor Strange is a real Hermione, right? <laughs> like he's all about studying. Like he's just a really oh, good sorcerer because sure. he's really good at studying the books. And I think that's yeah. that's a that's a fun little thing for Doctor Strange. And I like that they included that in this. He's his like r obsessive study uh, was how mm -hmm. he, how he got this. You know, mm -hmm. I really like the line that he spoke to himself uh, when he said, um, "This isn't love. This is arrogance. This is our need to fix everything." Right. It's just like the wisdom of a later version of him saying that is, is, is really powerful. Like trying to explain to your earlier self, like, no, you're making a mistake. You're making the same mistake I used to make all the time. Don't do it. And you're just like trying but, to stop yourself. Yeah. It's such a paradox because you would not have the knowledge or the lesson that you right. learned unless you underwent that mistake the first time around in, in, in the first place. So. Yeah. And that, that's one of the beautiful things about beautiful. Uh, that's one of the beautiful things about <laughs> time travel stories is that like that sense of regret that we can have and our ability to go back and change one thing. And that's so many stories are that way. And this, this was a really beautiful one. I I'm, I'm very impressed with this episode and it, for being so short, it really had a, it packed an emotional punch for sure. Yeah. It's, it's the second week in a row where it's, I only, recognize the fact that it's on the shorter side when you bring it up because i feel like they really did a great job with pacing and just packing a lot in there i feel like you know with four episodes in we've kind of understood like the nature of the show it's like yeah we're gonna set things up just a little bit and let you know what familiar characters we're playing with and then just basically go in a completely different direction but i really almost felt like we kind of got like in terms of like the stakes and where this episode ended, it almost felt like a, a feature length episode or a, excuse me, yeah. a feature length movie. And that being said, I, I'd kind of be interested in seeing a full length Dr. Strange movie done in this style. Like I just really think, right. I his character it, in particular, yeah. and just his power set and the visuals there just really lend themselves um, to such a unique style. I did want to bring up Tilda Swinton though. Oh yeah, it's one of those things. I've I've always been interested to see how successful the renders are or not when we see these characters. And every time I saw her, it's just like I don't know if it's just because the character has so little going on. It's just a white shaved head character. Like you just, there's not really much you can focus in on. I also kind of wondered were they trying to like retroactively 
kind of fix the mistake of the whitewashing they did there oh, and just make her even more androgynous but i, I don't i don't know yeah. Yeah, I, I felt like they were going for Tilda Swinton, but I also I agree. Like, her, there were there were shots where she almost looked like she didn't have a nose at all, mm -hmm, on top mm -hmm. of her lack of features that she has already. It was like her nose was missing at one point, uh, or it was like just a little <laughs> shadow instead of like being really. I don't know. It was. It was. I agree. I, I can totally see that. Um, yeah. Now the real story that we're that we're telling here is what happens when you're going out on the town. And you choose the wrong accessory. Mm. You know? One Doctor Strange chose the, the cape of levitation. <laughs> and the other one <laughs> chose whatever that purple cape is. And, uh, and that's just uh, sent them on completely different paths. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did appreciate the cape fight. That was pretty, that yeah. was pretty great in a really high octane, just bombastic fight sequence. You've got the kind of comical element of these capes tangled amongst each other flying through <laughs> yeah i thought it, the the bombastic nature of that fight scene it's like very cool and there's just lots of like throwing them around and bumping into things i really enjoyed it but the cape thing was funny but also the fact that like it ended with them just kind of punching each other a lot was weird yeah that's fair <laughs> there was a long sequence where they're like Agent Smith and Neo like flying through the <laughs> rain, punching each other. And I was like, would Dr. Strange be just punching he himself? I feel like he would be doing something else, right? I don't know. Yeah, Maybe he's not. not the most punchy of heroes. So yeah. that's, that's a good critique. Uh, one thing I don't critique at all is I love, like, you, you mentioned this feels like a feature. I felt like this felt like a full comic book arc. You know what I mean? Okay. Like when you. Uh, get through it like the the ancient one reveal when she reveals that she created a second one of him mm. like that feels so much like a comic book arc to me where you suddenly find out that one that the guy you're about to face off with is like a mirror version of you from this other experience and like and it's, it's it was created by uh, some all-knowing character because they knew it needed to happen a certain way. Like that just feels so comic booky to me. So that that origin story for these characters, and I really really liked that a lot. Yeah, I didn't see it coming. That was me neither. One of the things I appreciated the most about the episode is one of the things we said about the last episode as well. As much as Owatu was much more active in the in the proceedings here, he still did not present us with that question. Um, outright did he or am i mistaken um well i think it was more like the thing that changed was christine okay um now and then and then the reaction of uh the ancient one was the, the her attempted defense she knew she would be gone when when it needed to happen so she created this splintered version of him to try to create a protector to defend the world against this dark Doctor Strange. But the fun thing about it is it didn't work. And like the world it went under, which is also wild. Yeah, yeah. Always love a story that ends with the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of uh, echoes of Infinity War and the fact that the quote unquote villain wins at the end. But even with like people disintegrating, Obviously, it was done a little bit differently in this animated style and with like the black gooey tendrils um, floating up everywhere. But in terms of everybody just kind of disintegrating and having their last couple yeah. of seconds there where they could, you know, voice their despair uh, felt very much like the snap to me. Hmm. I see that. The thing that it reminded me of was, you know, he's he, he gained all this power by absorbing creatures like that's what he's been doing for centuries. Apparently he's been in that right. room fighting and absorbing creatures. And then all these people out on the street are like slowly being absorbed. It looked like, and it, to me, yeah. it was mirrors of like his grief is like destroying this universe. And th he is absorbing the entire universe into his own ego, you know, into ah. his own desire to have Christine back is absorbing the entirety of the world, which it is. But I thought that yeah. that visual element lent itself to like, yeah, like that's what's happening right now. His absorption ability is like doing that on a global scale or whatever. Yeah. Because it's all the reason he starts that in the first place is he wants them to lend him their power. Yeah. So that, that lends a lot of credence to your theory there. And I think you're right on the money. 
as he's as his ego has grown as his ego has grown and he's more and more arrogant he acknowledges that there at the end he he has basically consumed everything up until that point and all that's left is him and the watcher and he's basically begging the watcher at that point which is something we've never really seen strange do outside of his initial asking the ancient one to teach him in the first place yeah 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 oh man well uh let's see we got a few people who wrote in a few things here let's cool. see oh we got jess kamai our good friend jess kamai says I, I feel like this relationship with dr strange and christina is so much deeper in this episode compared to the movie uh he was so cold and pushed her away in the film in a way that d- didn't make me think she was his heart yeah it's interesting you, you you mentioned how we don't really have the actual moment that things swapped for this universe mm. um but she was was she in the car in the original no she, she was not they right yeah so some 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 different choices were made that led her to be in the car and the promise of creme brulee and all that stuff like <laughs> i don't know that that was I, I i to be honest i haven't seen dr strange in like four years so i i can't remember uh exactly what what elements of this story are from that but she was not in that car is the thing that i remembered they yeah in in the film doctor strange they're very much more on the rocks they're friendly in the workplace and they have a nice rapport but she says something to the effect like i i got the strange theory like i've i've already had that experience i know what you're about and you're about you first and foremost mm. Mm. yeah uh, well and and the thing is that's the thing is like he's not in this universe and so sure. like in a way even though he's arrogant still he yeah. isn't as selfish in this universe. He's able to let love in, which like leads him down a dark path, which is a weird thing, you know, like mm-hmm. he's actually able to like connect with Christine in a way that he wasn't in the other universe. And that leads him eventually to the dark path because he loses the thing he loves. Mm. That's just, that's powerful and interesting themes to play with on this uh, little cartoon every week, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, certainly love certainly it. i love it uh courtney uh courtney says i definitely sent the little panda away <laughs> <laughs> wise decision wise decision. yeah i think i think that was a wise decision for sure um let's see roxanne reed says the ancient one said that christine's death was an absolute point and that she had to die in order for him to search for the mystic arts and defeat dormammu if christine's death is an absolute point doesn't that mean that the main timeline dr strange is not actually from the main mcu timeline doctor that the main timeline doctor strange is not actually from the main mcu timeline interesting since christine is still alive on the mcu timeline wouldn't it make uh wouldn't this make the mcu timeline an alternate or does every timeline have its own absolute points maybe i'm overthinking this you're not overthinking this roxanne well okay we're we're both overthinking this i had the same questions but by the end of the episode i just had to let it go because like I think what they're saying is it's an absolute point for th- I had I had in my notes at one point absolute point question mark what the f- uh, question mark uh, like because she's not dead if to me an absolute point in time or or a set point or whatever language you want to use in different media means that that happens no matter what the universe but like in this apparently not apparently this universe is re- it's it's weird because this universe relies on the fact that she dies but her dying is also the unraveling of this universe so it's almost as if this universe is destined for this to happen you know which is weird it is strange and it's kind of wishy-washy in terms of the continuity there i know how much we appreciate continuity but the multiverse i, I did bring up the fact that you know it was introduced as early as 2016 but this is to be fair, this is the first time we're really spending a significant <laughs> amount of time dealing with the ramifications of the multiverse. So there's, you know, there's the possibility that none of these timelines existed until um, what we saw at the events at the end of the events of of Loki there with uh, He Who Remains and, and the fact that we have this multiverse splitting off. I mean, a lot of the things that happened in this episode just with Doctor Strange manipulating time and the corrupted nature of it you I, there were a couple of times where i was just like where's the tva why isn't the tva stepped in yeah i just have to Im- imagine yeah um 
in terms of absolute points, maybe they're not the same thing as Nexus events or, or Nexus beings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, Nexus events in this universe... See, that's the thing. Like, the comics version of Nexus events seems very different. The, the comics version of Nexus beings seems very different from the, the TV show's version of Nexus events because sure. Nexus beings are these, like, things that are the same in every universe or something like that, right? They, yeah, they seem like they're constant through lines no matter what... And then in, in this, Nexus events are the thing that caused the universe to be different. Like, they're almost the opposite. Uh, True. Which is, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Hera says, well, the difference here was that probably he chose to love her instead of his hands. Hmm. Ooh. So it changed okay. the motivation that moved him to the mystic arts. She says, the ending, oh my God, was not expecting that. Uh, he chose her in this time instead of his ego and his hands. I like I like that interpretation a lot. Really, really thoughtful. Sure. That's cool, yeah. and I think it's fairly true uh, of of how this this ended up going down. So uh, yeah, man, this is this. I I really enjoyed this episode. This is a lot of fun. Totally. Um, totally. Well, uh, did you have anything else uh, you wanted to point out with this episode? No, no, I'm excited to rewatch it and uh, I'll have the opportunity to give my much more comprehensive thoughts on animation deliberation. Uh, yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, well, I meant to mention this up top. I'll mention it up top on another week, uh, but we have a brand new contest happening for September and I want to tell you guys about it. We have in the past done review drives where we try to get all of our listeners to go review a certain podcast or any podcast or our podcast or one of the other ones in the network um, for a t-shirt or whatever. That's what we've done in the past. But we decided to try an experiment this month. Instead of a t-shirt, we're going to go all out and we are giving away uh, your choice of an Oculus Quest 2 or a Nintendo Switch. And Say what? Right? It's crazy. So big prize... And all you have to do to enter is review a stranded panda podcast. Um, basically, we just would like we the the network has grown. We've got nine active shows now that are like basically producing new content every week. And we would love for you guys you guys to find those shows and give them a chance. And we would love for those shows to get more visibility on on Apple Podcasts and on all the services because all the services really use Apple Podcasts as their way of ranking them for whatever reason. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what you can do to participate is go to strandedpanda.com slash contest and, uh, you will find instructions and links. T I put literally like, there's just nine pictures, uh, the, the images from the nine podcasts you can choose from and just click on them and it'll take you right to the iTunes or I keep saying iTunes, the Apple podcasts. Uh, page where you can review the podcast. Um, and if you review a podcast, five star review, um, uh, give a five star review and uh, make sure you subscribe while you're there and give a five star review and that will enter you into the um, the, the, the the contest and we're just going to draw one and normally when we do this with the shirts like 40 or 50 people at the most have done it now we're hoping a lot of people do it this time but you just never know this might be like a well, you might be giving entering in for like a one in 40 chance uh, to, and, you know that's yeah. like for a for a free entry, it's a really could be a really great opportunity to win a win a game system if you want one. Um, and every podcast on the network that you enter, uh, that you subscribe and put in a five star review, uh, you will be entering in to win uh, the thing. So you can get up to nine entries and nine times your chances to win uh, the prizes. So thought it'd be fun uh, if you want an Oculus Quest or a uh, Nintendo Switch easy way to do it go to strandedpanda.com slash contest and that's it that's all you got to do uh, and we will announce uh winning a uh, username at the end of the month and you do have to have access to that username to verify that it was you because you'll need it we're going to send you like a code word or something and have you review us again with that code word because we want every we, we don't want anyone to uh just say that was their username <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, oh, and if you don't have an Apple, a lot of people will get annoyed because we don't have Apple, uh, because Apple Podcasts is the only way that really podcasts are ranked. So, I'm sorry to all the Android people, but if you have an iPad anywhere in your life, you can review us on that iPad. It's fine. Like, if your granddad has an iPad, 
go to your granddad and be like, can I borrow this for a minute? And just hit us, give us, hit a, give us a review on there, five stars, and it'll enter in as long as you can get back to that iPad and uh, put in the code word when it, whenever you win, then we'll, uh, we'll be good to it's go. It's easier to ask somebody to use their iPad than it is to ask them to buy you an Oculus Rift or a Nintendo Switch. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the only other two rules for this whole thing is don't mention that it's a pro- for a prize. Because we did have people do it in the past where they just go, five stars, I did this for a shirt. Like, and that's not, we're not going to count that. <laughs> so don't mention you did it for a prize. And uh, don't say anything negative about the show you're reviewing. We've had people be like, I don't like this show, but I like the MCU cast. And like, don't do that. I like, or <laughs> don't be like, I don't listen to this show. Just if you want to just say like, I like the Strain of Pendant Network, that's fine. Something about the Strain of Pendant Network is fine. But just don't say negative things about the show you're reviewing. Because that will also not count. You will get drawn and then discarded because... Those are the two. Those are the only two rules. Five stars. You, uh, you will actually have to buy the host of the show that you've insulted. You'll have to buy them a Nintendo Switch. Yeah, or exactly. Of their exactly. Shows. You will. You will receive a bill <laughs> through I, through Apple. Um, anyway, so that's a, that's a little, a little ad for the contest. We're going to be mentioning it throughout the month. I won't make it always this long, but strandedpanda.com slash contest. All the links, nine links, right there. You can do. Uh, you can do the. the uh, easily give five star reviews to all the shows and enter the contest nine times uh jay scotty tell them where they can find your show yeah if you are really enjoying what if as much as we are check out animation deliberation It is the show on the stranded panda network that covers action animation cartoons and series uh, we're the podcast that takes action animation and cartoons seriously but not too seriously so wherever you catch your podcast apple podcast stitcher Podbean, all of those, you can find us there. Check us out. We're getting ready for Young Justice Season 4. That's going to be a lot of fun. And please do leave us a review. We'd definitely appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yep. I I was supposed to try to come on like last week. I think we just like didn't get connected. I'm sorry. I, I think it's between Dragon Con and Shang-Chi. It's, it's a difficult week. So. Yeah, it's a difficult week. But maybe next week. I would love to come on and talk even more in depth about these episodes because they've been freaking good. All right, guys. Oh, well... Yeah. That is all from us. Thank you so much. Join us uh, back uh, next week. We'll be talking... Actually, tomorrow, uh, J- I think Jeff and Ashley are going to be dropping the Shang-Chi episode. Ooh. It's tomorrow. Golly, that's crazy. So keep an what eye... What a time. Actually, what a time. this will probably... By the time you're listening to this, it's probably the day the Shang-Chi tra- uh, review drops. That's crazy. Because this probably wow. will be edited until like almost midnight. So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> crazy. All right, guys. Well... Stick around, check the feed, uh, cut the check. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Get yourself some creme brulee. Enjoy your creme brulee. <laughs> Peace. Until next time, true believers. Thank you for joining us for the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. Available everywhere you get podcasts, and now a video version streaming live on twitch.tv slash strandedpandatv and available at youtube.com slash strandedpanda. And if you'd like to learn more about all of our other podcasts, geeky projects, and ways to support the network, visit strandedpanda.com.